Hello and welcome back to Don Chorus Writes, Miraculous Ladybug Fan Fiction and Audio Fiction. This is a new two-parter written by Shika for Fusion November, The Sunshine in My Smile. So I hope you like it. Make sure you smash that like button, comment down below and subscribe if you haven't already. And all of Shika's details are listed down below in the description. So make sure you go and give her some love as well. I hope you enjoy part one. Part one, Marinette's POV. It was late on Friday night and Marinette was still hard at work finishing the sweater she had knitted for Adrian for Christmas. This winter had been exceptionally cold and she wanted to give him some small token of warmth, friendship and love. After all, she had told Tiki the other day, it's not as if I could get the words out and if I went off to him and tried to give him my heart for a Christmas present. Not to mention it would be hard to wrap. Tiki had giggled in return, setting off the other Kwamis into peals and giggles and hoots, laughter all over the room. But now her little friends were asleep and she had some uninterrupted time to work on the sweater. I hope Adrian likes it, she thought, her hands busy about their work while her imagination dreamed about the sapphire blue cashmere would look like contrast to his peach skin and blonde hair. A sunshine boy had been more reserved than usual recently, in addition to how busy he had been with several photo shoots and publicity events to promote his father's new winter line. It meant he had little time to hang out lately, and he seemed to be tired. His father is working him too hard, she thought, growling softly under her breath as not to wake the Kwamis. Adrian has a piano recital and a performance for Christmas Eve, for some business event, the fencing competition, and now all this? Mr. Gress needs to let him breathe a bit before he suffocates or gives out from exhaustion. Marinette worried about him. While Adrian seemed happy most of the time, lately he had seemed more like a mask over whatever he was really going through, like a cheap veneer over a harsh splintered surface. She had a good cry over it just yesterday when she was hanging out with Alia and even Nino seemed to sense something was wrong with his best friend. That Adrian wouldn't tell him what was wrong but it kept insisting that everything was fine, caused them to have daily conferences via text about what they should do about it. Alia and Nino were determined to conduct some sort of plan to bring his smile back but Marinette retreated to what she did best, making and mending. She hoped the sweater would bring some warmth and colour into his life. She was just finishing up the bottom hem, a narrower band two inches deep to form a subtle blouse effect, when she heard a soft thump on the balcony above. Glancing at her phone, she realised it was after midnight. It must be that Garnier cat again, she thought, but when the second thump came, followed by a quiet scraping sound, she figured she had to check. Grabbing her sewing scissors like a knife, she climbed into her loft bed and poked her head out of the skylight. She couldn't see anything in the dark and had to wait for her eyes to adjust. After a few moments, she could make out a dark shape curled up in the folded chair and the light dusting of snow on the balcony floor showed the distinct line of a long leather belt flop limply over the edge. Cat Noir? she whispered. Are you okay? Are you hurt? He gave a sniff so quiet she might have missed it if it weren't for the silence of the snowy night. I didn't mean to wake you, princess, he murmured without looking at her. She wrapped a throw blanket around her shoulders and climbed out onto the balcony, not caring about the snow melting into her stockinged feet. Padding over to him, she pulled him towards her by the shoulder. His shoulders were tight with tension, but he gave no resistance to her moving him. I was awake anyway. You didn't answer my question, Cat, she said. Are you okay? Are you hurt? I'm fine, he rasped, not meeting her eyes. Don't lie to me, Cat Noir, she said, her voice soft but firm. What are you doing out here on my balcony after midnight in the snow if you're doing fine? I haven't been wounded, if that is what you're worried about, he replied, rubbing fiercely at his eyes with his wrist. 
Her partner was clearly upset and was worried about telling her. Poor Kitty, she thought wistfully. Doesn't he have anyone else to care about him? Hearts and spirits can be wounded too, she whispered. Come inside, Cat. It's freezing out here. I really shouldn't, Princess. Now, Cat, she commanded, pulling him to his feet. Again, he didn't resist her, but slipped through the skylight and perched at the end of a bed. He held himself stiffly, as if he was afraid of something, and his eyes looked lost. She closed the skylight behind them and wrapped him in her blanket. Stay here, she said. I'll be right back. She scurried downstairs and made two cups of hot ginger tea and added them to a small tray with a plate of leftover cookies. When she went back to her room, Cat's eyes immediately locked onto hers. They were squinting and the edges of his mask were wet. You can come down, you know, she said, placing the tray on the chest. She sat on her chaise and patted the space next to her. I don't bite. He blinked at her in confusion and then made his way slowly down the stairs and sat down next to her. She put her hand on his shoulder, hoping just friendly human contact would help to ease the stress she felt raiding off him like a sickening fog. Are you going to tell me what's wrong? She prompted, her heart wretched at seeing her partner, her best friend, reduced to this stiff, unhappy shell beside her. When all he did was look at her blankly, she pulled a crooked grin. What? Is the fearless cat noir afraid of a little mouse? He gave a dry chuckle, the first sign of anything beyond the sadness that engulfed him. You made such a cute mouse, Marinette. Relieved that she seemed to have reached him through his mental fog, she tried again. So, what brings you to my balcony, Romeo? Am I on your round of late night rendezvous, or did you just come for a snack? He coughed at her forwardness, and his cheeks turned pink. Good. I hope that brought him out of his funk for now. No, he said awkwardly. I just... he sighed. Marinette rubbed his back in what she hoped was a soothing manner. Look, whatever is going on, you can tell me if you want to. You know I won't tell anyone. That is the reason you came here, isn't it? He sniffed and nodded. Do, do you know what it's like to be surrounded by people all day and still feel lonely, empty? She thought about it. While she may have had lonely moments, she really wasn't a lonely person. However, since taking up the mantle of Ladybug, she knew what it felt like to be surrounded by people who knew about her but didn't know her as a person. And since she became the guardian, it had became even harder to spend time with people she cared about, leaving her feeling isolated. Yeah, she said. I guess I do. Well, that's what it's been like for me the past few weeks. Lots of people with lots of expectations, but no... But no... No warmth? He looked up at her with wide-eyed stare. How did you know? Marinette shrugged. Your eyes. My eyes? Yeah, she said, pulling her knees up to her chest and wrapping her arms around them. The look in your eyes reminds me of someone who I think is going through something similar. Who? That is, if it isn't prying. It's a boy at my school, Adrian Agress. I guess you can say we're friends, or at least I like to think so. He says we are, but anyway, his dad is making him do all sorts of crazy promotional stuff for the family business, and I think it's wearing him out. He has said nothing, but he just seems to be more and more tired and withdrawn every time I see him, she sighed. He is kind of reserved, so I don't know all of this for sure, but... I think he feels lost in the crowd and expectations too. You can tell all that by looking in his eyes? Cat sounded amazed. Well, yeah, this is going to sound silly. No, princess, he urged, bumping gently against her shoulder. I'm the silly cat in this room, you know. She chuckled. Well, it's like he wears a mask. Like you do, except 
behind his eyes. He puts on a smile and says everything is fine, but I can tell he isn't. At least, she faltered. I get the feeling he isn't. They both sat in silence for a long moment. Cat Noir seemed lost in thoughts until Marinette handed him the jug of ginger tea. Here, she said, the Dupan Chang family cure all hot ginger tea and cookies. Thanks, he smiled weakly and took the mug. So, how should Adrian and I fix our problems? She took a sip of her tea before setting down her mug and holding out her arms. Well, maybe a hug is a good place to start? Cat Noir stared at her with sad hunger in his eyes. He set his mug on the floor and all but fell into her arms. He held her tightly as if she was his lifeline. He's so tense, isn't he? He's shaking. She held him for a while rubbing his back and humming an old song of her father's from when she was little. What is that song? His voice was barely a whisper in her hair. My someone I loved used to sing that to me, but I can't remember the words. I'm not much of a singer, she murmured, but I'll try. The water is wide. I can't cross here and neither have I wings to fly. Give me a boat that can carry two, and both shall row, my love and I. There is a ship, and she sails the sea. She's loaded deep, as deep can be, but not as deep as the love I'm in, and I now know how I sink or swim. The water is wide, and I can't cross here. Neither have I wings to fly. Give me a boat that can carry two, and both shall row, my love and I. They sat in silence for a little while, then she remembered something else that might cheer him up. Letting him go slowly, she went to her chest and pulled out a flat box wrapped in dark green paper and decorated with a Christmas bell. I know it isn't Christmas yet, but I made this for you. He stared at her blankly, as if he didn't understand what she was doing. You made something for me? Of course. She replied with a shy smile. I mean, a superhero like you must get loads of gifts from people, and I know it isn't much, but I made it with you in mind. Not really, except for a lot of fan mail and the occasional chocolates. But why would you make something for me? Marinette felt the flush rise in her cheeks. We said we would be friends, right? His cheeks turned pink as well. You didn't need to. I didn't get you anything. She sighed, rubbing the bridge of her nose in frustration. This silly cat. Couldn't he tell she was trying to make him feel better? Then think of it as a belated thank you gift for saving me, she said, holding the package out to him. Gingerly, Cat took it and carefully removed the bell and tore the paper along the tape. He opened the box and his eyes widened. He took out a black scarf with small grey paw pints on the end and green tassels that matched his eyes. I would have made you something bigger, but I didn't want to give you something you couldn't wear just in case I knew you behind the mask, secret identities and all that. He fingered the scarf lovingly for a moment and then rubbed it against his face to feel the soft material. She knew there was only so much she could feel through the suit's gloves, and his looked thicker than hers. He put the scarf on and smiled at her with grateful eyes. Thank you, Marinette, he whispered. It's perfect. Wow, no puns? That's the first, she thought. She reached out and ruffled his hair. No problem, Kitty. One thing that helps me feel better is to turn my attention outwards. She chuckled nervously as she sat next to him again. I kind of have a tendency to get stuck into goofy loops in my head, you know. He gave her a loud, lopsided grin. I can sympathise. Well, focusing on helping or doing something nice for others gets my hands and mind busy and cheers someone up. It helps twice. Does that make sense? He nodded. It's just that I really 
only get to help people as a superhero. In my civilian life, I don't get a chance to do those kind of things, and I'm not creative like you are. She took a sip of a tea and thought about that for a moment. You don't have to make things to do something nice for others. Buy someone lunch or send a card, give a hug or a smile. All of these things can make a vast difference in someone's day. She sighed, deflecting a bit. I miss Adrian's smiles. The real ones? When he's happy, it's like he brings the sunshine with him. And his laugh is one of my favourite sounds in the world. Really? Cat looked up from his tea in surprise. You think so? Marinette realised she might have said too much and shot him a sheepish look. Yeah. She blushed again, embarrassed at spilling her feelings to her partner, even if he didn't know that. He leaned in with a soft smile. It's okay, princess. I know what it's like to have a special friend too. Yeah, a special friend. Marinette knew she shouldn't feel this way, but that word was feeling like thorns without a rose. Her heart ached, knowing that the boy she loved was hurting and she didn't know why or how to fix it. It felt like all her craftiness was small comfort compared to the weight of what Adrian must be feeling right now. Cat, she said, staring down into her empty mug, do you ever feel lonely for a specific person? She felt his warm hand squeeze her shoulder and she hurriedly rubbed her burning eyes to force the tears back into hiding. You mean where you want to know where they are and what they're doing? You want to know what their thoughts and dreams are and if they think about you when you're not around? Where you would give almost anything to be with them as much as they will let you? Then, yeah. I do. Every day. She looked over at him and he gave her a crooked grin. She squeezed his hand on her shoulder. I guess we have more in common than I thought, she said with a sad smile. After all, she was pretty sure he was talking about Ladybug and it hurt her to know she was part of the cause of his loneliness. Cat blushed but didn't take his hand away. Princess, would it be okay if I stayed for a little while longer? She reached over and ruffled his hair. How could I refuse the hero of Paris? But I'm not asking as a superhero, he said softly. I'm asking as a friend. Then maybe we can both be less lonely. She picked up the plate of goodies and held it out to him. Cookie? The next Monday, Marinette was putting her bag in her locker only to discover a Christmas present on the shelf wrapped in silvery paper and tied with a light blue bow. A small tag said, To Marinette, on the front, but had no return name. She opened the box carefully to reveal a beautiful glass music box shaped like a castle wrapped in blue tissue paper. Turning the key, she heard the familiar notes of the water is wide, and the castle rotated on its base. A small white card nestled in the paper that read, Princess, you are my sunshine in my smile. It was signed with a little paw print. Marinette grinned. Her kitty was so sweet and thoughtful. She carefully repacked the music box and sent it in her locker for safekeeping. Then, tucking the card into her pocket, she headed off to class not seeing the sunshine smile on the face of the blonde boy who watched her from the corner of his green eyes. Thank you for listening to part one to The Sunshine in My Smile. Make sure you look out for next week for part two and go and send some love to Shika for writing it and... Send some love down below by smashing that like button. Comment down below what you think of it, what will happen next. And subscribe if you haven't already. What are you waiting for? There's just so much to happen and you don't want to miss out on part two. So, I will speak to you soon. Bye.